What specifically drew you to going to the Titanic oh. three separate times? <laughs> we were going to the bottom of all five of the world's oceans. And at one point we had to go to the Arctic Ocean and we were going through the Panama Canal. We drew a line from the Panama Canal to where we were going in the Arctic. And it was like right over the Titanic. It's really going, guys, we got the we Titanic. We're going right over it. So on the very first dive, you know, it was, it was my system, my crew. I said, I want to take it down solo. No one had ever done that. Solo? Yeah. Most people think if you go to the Titanic, you'll see the wreck. So I get in the sub, I get to the seafloor, 4,000 meters or so, and I start creeping up to the, to the, what I think is the direction of the wreck. At about 100 meters off, I get the first ping on the sonar. Oh, hey, there's something out there. And then I get closer and closer, and now I'm like 40 meters away, the maximum extent of my lights. I'm looking out the window, I see nothing but black. I start inching the sub closer. Now I'm 20 meters away from what's on the sonar, this big jumbled mass of something. I, okay, is that a rock? I'm looking out the window, nothing but black ocean. And then it hit me. I went, oh. Victor Viscovo an extreme explorer who completed the Explorer's Grand Slam by summiting the highest peaks on all seven continents, including Everest and skiing to both poles. Plus, you're the first person to dive to the deepest points in all five oceans. You hold the Guinness Book World Records, the most dives to Challenger Deep 15 times, discovering the deepest shipwrecks and achieving the extreme trifecta by going to Everest, the ocean's bottom, and to space on Blue Origin. CBS News has learned that the Boston Coast Guard is operating a search and rescue mission for a missing submarine. What went wrong with that sub that oh, God. what happened there? Oh, the Titan. Going to the bottom of the ocean is like going into a pyramid. It feels very ancient, very dark. You know, you get this immense sense of time. Climbing Everest is like mortal combat, going into the octagon and just getting the hell beat out of you and still trying to survive. Going into space is like going to a Metallica rock concert. It is just awesome. You're going up vertically at Mach 3. You know, the chime goes off, you unbuckle and you float out of your chair. You have these huge windows and you're seeing the earth from space. There's no kidding, you are in space. And there's something that astronauts coined in the Apollo program called the overview effect. That when you get to space and you see the earth from space, it can change you psychologically. I believe that is true. I swear you, you want to come back and be better and do better. That's why I think I'm a huge proponent of getting people into space because I don't think anyone goes into space and comes back worse. Most dangerous thing I've ever done is high altitude mountaineering. They don't call it the death zone to be melodramatic. It's very scary up there. You're slowly dying and you know, there are dead bodies up there. Do you see them? Oh, hell yeah. People just don't get a sense of what it's like on summer day on Everest. You are hypoxic. It's like you're drunk. You're bound up in all this material to keep you warm. You can't hear because the wind is so loud. The extinction of dinosaurs. We have to hit this right now. Yeah. What do you think about that? How's it going to end up? Many people focus, of course, on what we call the kind of marquee element of that, which is de-extincting the woolly mammoth. Is this a legitimate woolly mammoth? or is it edited DNA? Well, that's a very good debate. The real value in a company like Colossal Biosciences are the tools that they're developing in order to manipulate things at the genetic level. What is important is that we are able to create species that can fill a niche 
like the Tasmanian tiger that was eliminated by mankind, exterminated, and it unbalanced the ecosystem in Tasmania. If we can bring back an animal that functions like the Tasmanian tiger did in the ecosystem, I think that's a big win. What do, you, what do you think about, you know, the fears of, I mean, probably already doing it, but cloning human beings? Let's just say uh, there's nothing that makes it impossible. We've cloned other mammal species, so one just has to wonder, has it already been done yet? Any aspirations to find Atlantis? <laughs> of course. What I've learned about history is the old saying, history is a pack of lies that we all agree on. <laughs>